the parallel between Israel and the church. The parallel between Israel. This this is a, a couple part. Actually, this goes on for quite a bit. Uh, but uh, three lessons. We're going to go to lessons one tonight. In in the future, I plan on getting some printouts and handing them out and doing that. In fact, I may go back and uh, make uh, printouts of things that I've taught on before. Or I may just start with this one and go on from there. Uh, pray for me. It seems I have a lot to do and hardly any time to do it in. Uh, so uh, I plan on getting a lot more done yesterday. Uh, but when a little baby girl is sick in the hospital, uh, not eating, not drinking, not going to the restroom, uh, temperature real high, it's, you know, there's time you have to break away. Uh, so I made two trips to Fort Irving yesterday. Amen. Uh, we're going to go to, we're going to read in Romans. Chapter 9. And we'll turn to Romans chapter 9. My son asked me one time, uh, Caleb asked me, he said, uh, he said, Dad, why, why don't you just preach out of the Bible? Because I print all I print all my all my uh, scriptures out. I have the Bible program on my computer. And it's still the Bible, you just print it out so you don't have to turn back and forth. And because uh, I like things to go a little smooth and preach smooth while I preach and teach whatever. Uh, one night uh, I lost everything I printed out and uh, I had to preach out the Bible that night. The leatherback Bible, not the computer Bible. And uh, I said this the other day for those that work here, uh, if you're, if you, uh, I've started it this year again, I read the Bible through the uh, Several times, I can't tell you exactly how many. But I'm starting again and reading it from Genesis to Revelations. And I'm doing it any year. Uh, I believe I have some daily bread things. Uh, but I encourage you this year to read the Bible all the way through again. I had a guy ask me, Brother Penrod, he said, Well, why don't you read it again? You already read it once. I said, man, this ain't going to soak up. I said, when you read it over and over and over, you understand more and more and more. It's a book, it's a book of knowledge. It's the Word of God. And we'll never cease to understand or unlock it, all of its mysteries in just one reading. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And because if we did, we'd be as God. Which God knows everything. And, uh, so I encourage you to read the Bible. Romans chapter 9. And I'm going to read uh, starting at I already started at verse, verse 1. It says, I say the truth in Christ. I lie not. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I could, for I could wish that myself were a curse from Christ for my brother, my kinsmen, According to the flesh, who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, I praise you, God. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for everything that you have done in the service. I thank you, God, for the songs that was brought forth. For the testimonies, Lord Jesus, that was brought forth in this place. Lord, I'm asking you, Lord, that you would anoint my mind, body, soul, and spirit, Lord Jesus, God. That you would help me deliver this lesson, God, Lord, that you have helped me with, Lord God. And I thank you, Lord Jesus, for your word, for this for this Bible that, uh, that is your word, your living word, Lord, as we place it into our hearts, Lord Jesus. I ask you, God, Lord God, to, go with, uh, to, to be with us in the remainder of this service. Lord, in the, in, in the precious name of Jesus, I pray. I give you all the glory, all the praise, Lord God. Hallelujah, 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 God. I thank you, Lord Jesus. I praise you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated. I've been reading in, in, in Genesis now, and I'm almost in the book of, well, I'm getting nearly into the book of Genesis. And uh, and uh, I was reading the other day, and I'm, I'm, I'm so thankful I was, I was not living in the days of uh, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, as Brother Pema. Those men had a lot of wives. And then the wives had babies in competition of, to, get, to be the favorite. I don't think I could handle that. Because I, I know back in, back in the day, it was, you know, to, for a woman to give birth to a man, to, to a boy, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was uh, there was something special about it. So there was a competition who could give the most toys. And I just, I don't know if I could, Sister Christ, I just, that's just not me. I'm thankful in the New Testament it says, be the husband of one wife. One wife. Amen. 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 All things are passed away. <laughs> All things are new. Uh, but uh, I, I thank God that I'm in the day that I'm in. Amen. And uh, I look for a little bit today, I want to talk about the parallel between Israel and the church. And I picked, I picked the first part of chapter 9. We're going to be going through chapter 9 a little bit and a couple other uh, scriptures. But it's not a pen I was going to read. But here, it's, uh, Paul was in great heaviness uh, because Jesus came to his own. And his own received him not. Um, he went to the Samaritans, uh, went to the Gentiles, and they received him more so than the, than the Jews did. And one day uh, the Jews are going to receive him. One day they are. Either he's going to come back to glory, and uh, we're going to be with him, and we're going to the uh, battle of Armageddon, and uh, they. They are going to receive him in that day, right. uh, and uh, I, I look forward to that day. I want them. Uh, I often ought to think that scripture when when Jesus was speaking to uh, Peter, he said, "I don't care what other men are saying about me or who I am. Who do you say that I am?" Right. That is so that is so important in these days that we know for ourselves yes. who Jesus is, right. and what it means to us. Yeah. Amen. And scripturally, amen, who he is to us in our lives. And I want to go into the parallel. And this lesson had, had some, some, some good things. So for the most, for a lot of it, I am going to read, uh, as they say, verbatim, word for word. Uh, I don't like big words, but sometimes they do pop in my head. Uh, and uh, uh, I'm, I'm going to read this. Uh, it says, uh, when we find that the scriptures show a clear parallel between Israel and the church, then what right we have to call the church spiritual Israel? We have in our possession one of the most valuable principles of understanding the Word of God. Since about two-thirds of the Bible is given in a literal sense to natural Israel, think about that, we have to know scripturally why we're called a spiritual Jew. Because two thirds of the Bible is, in a literal sense, to as it says specifically toward uh, the Jewish race, the Hebrews, uh, and the church would have very little of the Bible left to claim as its own, unless the same promises given to Israel literally were for the church in a spiritual sense. All through. Uh, this lesson today, we, uh, we will find the church coming in ahead of Israel and enjoying the promises made to God's chosen race before they are ever fulfilled in natural Israel. Think about that. You're enjoying something today that Israel hasn't even experienced yet. That's right. And they're God's people. God's chosen people. Many are called, few are chosen.